So I think it's safe to say that the initial release of Star Wars Battlefronts the Classic Collection has been a bit of a disaster. Now I personally have not played the game yet, I wasn't really willing to fork out £35 on a game that I already have, even if it is a remastered version with an updated multiplayer, because I kind of had a feeling that this might happen. Unfortunately it's a very common theme nowadays where Games that you look forward to are released broken or incomplete or it's just not what you expect and this definitely feels like the case with Battlefront the Classic Collection. Um, it's supposed to be a remastering of the you know great games from the 2000s, uh, games that I spent many hours on, had a great multiplayer campaign, had a great single player campaign, the gameplay was really smooth, it just felt great in you know all elements. And so when this was released today, the 14th of March, people have flocked to the reviews to complain about all the different issues. A lot of them seem to be around the multiplayer. A lot of them seem to be around the fact that there are only three PC servers that hold a maximum of 64 players each. Now, maths has never really been my strong point, but 64 players on three different servers is around about 200, just a little under 200 players capacity for PC servers. The very first day, they had a peak of 10,000. Now, again, maths not being my strong point, I'm pretty certain that 200 does not go into 10,000. And the problems aren't just related to the PC side. On the console, it appears as though the promised crossplay is not actually true crossplay. Yes, Players can play across different versions of their consoles, so PlayStation 4 players could play with PlayStation 5, but PlayStation players cannot play with Xbox players, which, again, in a game that very much will depend on player numbers, is going to cause problems further down the line, because people will eventually stop playing the game. If people stop playing the game in these big lobbies, then people will struggle to find a game, and the players who do stick around will eventually become discouraged, and then we'll stop playing the game. You see it so many times with these kind of large scale FPS shooters because it's a domino effect. As soon as players can't find games, they stop playing, which means other players can't find games, then they stop playing. So it's not been a smooth release by any uh, you know, stretch of the imagination. And people are complaining that, again, it's not worth the money for the fact that it is simply just an upscaled version of a game that already exists on Steam that you can already play. It's not as if this is a re-release of a game that's been unavailable for the last few years. It's not as if people have not been playing this game for the longest time. It was supposed to offer an updated, upscaled experience with expanded game modes and improved AI. It was supposed to bring the classic game into the modern era, but unfortunately, right now it feels like a bit more of a cash grab, and the reviews are certainly quite harsh. A lot of people, again, making all of these complaints about the servers, making all these complaints about the gameplay, about multiplayer just not really working in general. And so, again, at this point, you have to feel that... Avoid it. Avoid it until they can fix the issues. This happens too many times. It happens too many times, not just with this game, with games in general. You know, companies release them, and they are either broken upon release, incomplete, all of the good content hidden behind paywalls, um, you know, pay to win is an issue, and it's just becoming a really frustrating issue. Um, you know, again, I wish it wasn't, but it is. So, yeah, that's uh, the sort of initial reactions to Battlefront's The Classic Collection. I think the general advice right now is to not, you know, waste your money on it until they can at least fix it. Um, so keep an eye out on to, you know, different sources, you know, different reviewers um, until they do manage to fix it. You know, use the review sites, use Steam reviews, if you are thinking about purchasing the game, um, I'm sure they will fix it eventually. It's just, it is concerning when you think of the lack of preparedness beforehand. Um, so again, it does kind of make me feel like they just wants to make a quick book with a game that already existed. It's not that expensive to upscale all graphics, um, but they've clearly not invested in server capacity. And, uh, you know, again, whether they will or not is a question that we will have to see. So anyway... Thanks for watching. I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on the situation and I will speak to you in a little bit.